I've seen Mario Cristobal's news conferences after about three or four of these debacles. And what can he say? We're going back to work. We get a baby <laughs> from the ground up. He just keeps saying the same stuff over and over. So if anyway, you want, if you want to pull up something, Mark, yes, that, that if you want to pull up something and throw it on the screen, I don't normally like to be like Logan and pub myself here, but this week on NBC6.com, we wrote an article, well, I wrote an article, basically saying that this was the lowest point for the University of Miami. And I'm going to say it like this. Logan, you were born in, in 98, correct? Or 97? Seven. 97, okay. So you were just an infant when Florida State beat the University of Miami 47 nothing. The biggest, the biggest win Florida State has had over the, and you can go read it right now, there's, there's that pathetic excuse of a coach right there, Mario Cristobal, uh, making excuses in his post-game press conference. That In that 47 nothing defeat Florida State had over Miami in 1997, Florida State held Miami to 133 yards. That was a Miami team that ended the season 5-6 and six and was dealing with the probation era for the Canes. That Miami team, even in that game, even in that huge loss to Florida State, did not quit. What you saw the University of Miami do this past Saturday was quit. Miami gave up. It was a pathetic display from a school that loves to talk about how they are, how they're back. And I'm, I'm sick and tired of it. And I've, I've covered this team now for – this is my 16th season covering them. I'm sick and tired of hearing about this. I'm sick and tired of hearing about a school – saying they're back when they have no no basis for, for saying for having any justification for saying they're back. This is a team who you're playing your biggest rival and you quit. You come out in the second half and you don't even try. You're four touchdowns down, yet you're you're getting blown out in the first half. But you get the ball to start the second half and you essentially quit. You're an embarrassment right now to your program. You're an embarrassment to your history. You're an embarrassment to your fan base. You're an embarrassment to South Florida. You're an embarrassment to what the University of Miami football team was at one point. And the best part of it is, is in the press box, you have all these idiot bloggers. Sorry, Logan, I'm going to take a shot at bloggers for one moment. Sure. But you have idiot bloggers for the University of Miami who love to sit here, and I know they're going to sit here in this chat, and they're going to sit there with Cam in the next hour, and they're going to say the same things. We have a winning record over Florida State. Five rings, five rings, five rings. Yes, congratulations. You're continuously living in the past. And that's what's paralyzing the University of Miami program. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. You are continuously living in the past and not looking forward to the future. When Florida State lost to Jacksonville State, the most embarrassing loss in program history, I sat here for an hour with Mark, took it like a man, and, 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 and admitted to the faults of the program. Logan, obviously, of course, missed that show. He had, he had homework or something, whatever <laughs> excuse he used on that. <laughs> when Florida State lost to Miami by 42 points in 2020, Logan and I sat here until 2.30 in the morning, taking it, taking the abuse from Miami fans, and sat here and admitted to our failures as a program, because that's what you have to do, admitting to your failures. After this game... All you had was you had guys like Will Mallory, Xavier Recepo. You had um, Mike Norvell. And all they did was nobody wanted to own up to what took place in this game. All they did was talk about, well, we're moving on to Georgia Tech. Oh, we're moving on to Georgia Tech. Like you have the justification. You own this one. You have to own a 45 to 3. Sorry, I'm going to use my curse word here, Mark. You have to own up to a 45 to 3 ass whooping that Florida State gave you Saturday night inside Hard Rock Stadium. This is one that's going to live with you. To those seniors who this was your last game you played against your biggest rival, you lost by 42 points on your home field to your biggest rival. If you can't get hyped up to play Florida State, and I say the same thing about Florida State when we lost by 42 points to Miami in 2020. If you can't just write FSU on the board, if you're in the University of Miami locker room, if you just can't write Miami on the board, if you're in the FSU locker room, and that doesn't get you hyped up to play your best, you should have even taken the field. If that was the effort you were going to put out there, 
don't even take the field because that's an embarrassment to this rivalry. This is the greatest rivalry in college football over the last 40 years. There was a 20-season period from 1983 to 2002 where this series combined for seven national champions and seven other years where a team, the winner of this game or the team from this game, played in the national title game. 14 out of 20 seasons, one of these two teams was playing for the national title. And then this is what we have to see? This is what Miami brings to the table in 2022? This was not a Miami team that was mired in the probation era like the 1997 Miami Hurricanes. This was a Miami team that was predicted to win the Coastal Division. This is all we heard in the offseason. Mario Cristobal is going to bring it. Mario Cristobal is going to lead this team to a championship. Mario Cristobal is going to bring the U back. And this is a Miami team that got shellacked by Middle Tennessee State, got shellacked by Duke, both at home, but their most embarrassing loss was to your rival? You can't get hyped up to play Florida State? You've got guys who grew up watching this rivalry, and you can't get hyped up for that? You're an embarrassment. You can't call yourself the U until you even win a conference. You haven't won a conference title since joining the ACC, but you want us to call you the U? No, you're not. You're not even the University of Miami at this rate. You're just a school down in Coral Gables. You have the same record as FIU right now. That's what you are. You have a worse record than UCF, than Florida, and Florida State. You're fourth on the depth chart in the state of Florida at this point. You're on par with FIU, a school that won one game combined in the last two seasons. That's who you are right now. You're a pathetic program. Can you get back to being a title team? Sure. I absolutely believe Mario Cristobal has the potential. But you need to own up what took place this Saturday. Even the cat's embarrassed at the University of Miami right now. Even Logan's cat. Logan's cat heard embarrassment and said, what? University of Miami, an embarrassment program? Ugh. Yeah, She's South loving Florida. it. South Florida, I was in the eighth grade. I drove up from South Florida for that game. I was 100%. And I remember thinking, wow, this is pathetic. But that Miami team showed up 10 times more than what that Miami team showed up. You're talking about a team of 188 yards of total offense. And let's see. Let's take a look at the stats right here. Luckily, I bring, I've saved receipts for this. You had a 45-yard rush from Jalen Knighton, and you had one long pass from Ja'Kari Brown. That's what Miami – that's the only thing that saved Miami and padded their stats. Otherwise, this was the most pathetic display. And then you want to sit here. You have guys in the press box when Clemson loses to Notre Dame. You had one blogger who, swear to God, I am not even making this up, said, oh, well, I think we can take Clemson. <laughs> are you kidding me yes Clemson got owned by Notre Dame but Clemson is going to destroy you in two weeks Pitt most likely is going to destroy you in your home finale and if you play the way you play this week Georgia Tech is going to beat you this week there's a potential that this Miami team that's supposed to win the Coastal Division could finish the year 4-8 and eight. how pathetic is that hmm. there was the 10 minute rant there Mark I told you it was coming <laughs> I'm just, well, I'm, I wanna... just sick, I'm sick and tired of hearing a Miami team talk about we're back, we're back, we're back, and this is the same product. And maybe it's just because I cover this team and I'm down here and I'm with them, but it's getting frustrating because I know that Miami has this potential. You're an embarrassment. It's embarrassing that you're, you're parading Tyler Van Dyke out there. Tyler Van Dyke had no business playing in that game, and you've essentially now lost him for the season. Tyler Van yeah. Dyke could not throw the ball. He went through four completions for 24 yards. He should not have even been suited up for this game. And you're going to parade him out there? It's to an watch the close-ups of him trying to throw and coming off the field, boy, he was beat up. He was in no shape to but try to go in that the, game. The last throw he did was nobody even touched him from FSU, and he just threw the ball on the ground and then walked off the field carrying his shoulder. He had no business. They knew he was hurt. Game. Yeah, they knew he was hurt, but that was their that was their last little chance that they could have in this game because we talked about it on the show. I said, if, "Shoot, uh, Tyler Van Dyke can't play this. This could uh, get get ugly by halftime." And sure enough, it did. I mean, he shouldn't have been out there whatsoever. Mario Cristobal continues to put him out there. Should be against the rules or something. Poor kid. Uh, definitely when you're going against a defense that pretty much is licking its chops at Miami's offensive line. Jared versus Derek McLendon. Pat Payton, who also had a really nice game there, too, who's going to be a star for Florida State next season. Just licking their chops. i got to give credit to Adam Fuller here, too. It's always great to give it to Mike Norvell what he did, which I thought he called – I think he only called, like, one or two plays that I wasn't a big fan of. But other than that, man, you know, 
the defense did what they needed to do and they took care of business and uh, played how they should against a team that just didn't have a quarterback ready to play whatsoever. And that's how it should be. The expectations in the last couple of years have not been that way, but when you're in your third year for Mike Norvell, these are games that you should go in and dominate and Adam Fuller when it's needs to be done. It's done uh, mm-hmm. against bad teams and Florida state's done that uh, multiple times throughout the season in four games. So, uh, a nice game from from Adam Fuller, and I'm expecting a lot of the same going into this upcoming weekend with Florida State being able to go against a, a nice rushing game with, with Syracuse, but Florida State has found an answer to do so in a lot of games this season, and we're going to find out on Saturday night once again, another late-night primetime game. The only reason Miami was on that primetime game is because of Florida State's logo, and I do love the – also, I think there's a Florida – on three reporter saying something about making fun of nobody watching Miami, Florida state at seven o'clock. So let me just for someone that has maybe one brain cell could tell you more than, you know, the right answer here. Number one, how many phenomenal 7 PM games were on this last week and including Alabama LSU. Let's just get that out of the way. And number two, Florida state, Miami was over and by halftime. Who's watching the rest of that uh, if they don't have to? What, what what are we doing here? Just Florida Gators fans, which we'll talk about here in, le- in about a week or so. Uh, just absolutely brainless. And let me say one more thing before I go get my free media meal from the Florida Panthers. Yes, that's right. I'm always a whore for the free media meal. I'll 100% admit that. I'm going to say this one thing right here. I sat here and defended Willie Taggart, and I will continue to defend Willie Taggart, even when somebody – continuously blamed Willie Taggart for the problems at the beginning of the Mike Norvell era. And my comment was simply, you have to, you have to associate the losses with the coach who's there. Mike Norvell has to own those losses in the 2020 and 2021 season. Mm. Calm down there, Ace. Calm down. My yeah, we've been through this before. Calm that down, is calm mostly, down, yes, you've got to down. own them, but that doesn't finish. mean that the previous coach has put finish. you in a great position. And Willie Let Taggart... Me. Did a deplorable job at Florida State. There's no question about that. Now, he didn't get enough time to turn it around, but he did a bad job at Florida State. And you can't compare the job that he did at Florida State to what Mike Norvell is now doing at Florida State, especially since Willie Taggart took over a better roster than Mike Norvell did. Mark, if I can't interrupt you, you're not allowed to interrupt me, buddy. Calm down. Well, you've been Let's talking most of the time, so I'm going to take over. I have one more thing to say. Now to speak the truth. One more so thing the to truth say. There, is that Mike Norvell is doing a much better job than Willie Taggart. I'm not disagreeing with you. I have one more thing to say. The point I'm getting to is this. Do I think that the problems at the beginning of this season with the – this is the last thing I'm going to say about the University of Miami the entire regular season because they have not earned the right for us to talk about them the rest of this point. Do the problems at the start of the season associate – go with Mario Cristobal? No, no, no. A lot of that has to do with what – the way Manny Diaz left that team at the end of the 2021 season. That being said, this loss is completely Mario Cristobal. Mario Cristobal has to own this loss. This has nothing to do with what Manny Diaz, the way Manny Diaz left that program. This is a Mario Cristobal loss. This is a man who played in this rivalry. This is a man who knows how to get this team hyped up, and that's the product that you put out there. Kevin Steele walking into that stadium looked like he was walking to his own funeral. He looked like, oh, my God, we're about to get annihilated in this game. Josh Gaddis looked like he had no idea what he was doing as the offensive coordinator for that team for the University of Miami. But this one is completely on Mario. You cannot blame Manny for this one. This one is completely on Mario. Well, especially since Manny Diaz actually coached them to a better record. They they were actually great last year. They went five and one down the stretch. They beat a pit team that won the ACC championship. They beat a good NC State team. They were actually a decent team last year. They actually scored touchdowns last year. Yes. Oh, this this team's <laughs> a train wreck. Nine quarters without t- the last touchdown they scored was in the third quarter against Duke. Nine touchdowns in four overtime periods. They have not scored a touchdown. If you had told me this is what Miami football would be right now, we're done. So you know what, Logan, Mark, on this hour of Florida State Live, the 185th edition, with Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, Logan Robinson, the voice of Noel Game Day when he wants to, when he's not covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let's take one quick second, just bow our heads in a moment of silence for what the University of Miami used to be. Amen. Okay. 